In this video, I want to talk about the terminal behavior of an op amp, more specifically, the voltages and currents at uh, any terminal in the op amp. So, based on the analysis that I will provide in this video, we will get to two very important conclusions that we will use for any circuit that we want to design using op amps in this course. So the first thing that we need to talk about when we want to see how we can model or analyze the voltages at terminals of the op amps is that uh, how can we assign the polarities for these voltages. So in the figure that you see here we have the op amp as was represented in the previous video. So we have the non-inverting input, which is signified with this plus sign. We have the inverting input, which is signified with this negative sign. We have the positive power supply, the negative power supply, and then finally we have the output terminal. So the approach that we use for assigning the polarities for uh, op-amp terminals is practically based on the node voltage method. So if you remember for the node voltage method, what we did first was we considered a node as a reference node. So that is basically what we do here. So in this figure, if we consider this node as the reference node, we just assign the polarities of each one of these terminals based on the voltage rise from this reference node. So for example, the voltage at the inverting input of the op amp is defined as Vn, which is the voltage rise from this reference node. So as you can see, the negative side is in the reference node or the common node, and the positive side is what is uh, at the uh, inverting input. The same is applied for the voltage at the non-inverting input as well. We have the negative sign uh, at the reference node. The positive sign is at the non-inverting input. We do the same for the output terminal as well. We have the negative side uh, as the being connected to the reference node and the positive side is at the output terminal. Based on this, when we want to uh, supply power to the terminal, we use these uh, DC voltage sources. So this is, if you remember from before, this is equivalent to having a power supply like this. So since this is the positive power supply, what we have is we have the negative side of this power supply to be connected to the common node, and then the positive side is connected to the positive power supply. For the negative power supply, we connect the positive side of the power supply to the common node, and we connect the negative side to the uh, negative power supply. So for example, here, if the value is VCC uh, 10 volts, the voltage at the positive power supply is going to be positive 10 volts because of this configuration. The voltage at the negative power supply is going to be negative 10 volts. Right? So you should always keep that in mind, that the way that you connect the positive and negative power sources to an op amp should produce voltages that are both positive and negative. If this one is also positive 10, in that case, the op amp is not operational. It's not working, right? Because having these two voltages as exactly the same voltage it means that there is no 
voltage drop across the two which basically means that these two are uh, basically the same node and that means that there is no current inside the operational amplifier so because of that it doesn't work but when you use these voltage sources in this configuration you make sure that the positive power supply is positive the negative power supply is negative and then because of this voltage drop that you have then you have current flowing inside this uh, operational amplifier or in another word the operational amplifier is on what about the currents for the operational amplifier for the currents uh, we consider the reference direction to be always going to the terminal so for this uh, schematic we have five currents that can be considered we have the current for the non-inverting input we have the current for the inverting input we have the current for the positive uh, power supply we have the current for the negative power supply and then we have the current for the output terminal so the convention is that we consider the direction of these currents to all go to the terminal of the op amp so the direction here is that AP is entering the non-inverting terminal IN is entering the inverting terminal IC plus is entering the uh, positive power supply IC minus is entering the negative power supply and IO is entering the output terminal so this is the convention that we are going to use so now that we have these uh, reference polarities and reference direction let's just see how op amps behave behave, uh, behave uh, in general so the terminal behavior of the op amp which by the way is a linear circuit element can be characterized by two constraints one on the input voltages and the other one is on the input currents so these are the two constraints that we will figure out step by step and we will be using for all the circuits that are designed or analyzed by that are designed or analyzed in this course so let's just go through the voltage constraint so the voltage constraint for an op amp is derived from the voltage transfer char characteristic function of the op amp that basically shows the relationship between the output voltage and the difference between the two input voltages so in another word operation, operational amplifier is a differential amplifier so you have two inputs you have two inputs sorry and then the subtraction or the difference between the voltage at these two inputs is getting amplified and will be delivered to the output so this is what we call as the characteristic curve for an op amp so as you can see on the horizontal axis we have vp minus vn the voltage at the non-inverting input minus the voltage at the inverting input so that is the input in this graph or represented in the horizontal axis and we have V out to be represented in the vertical axis and then we have this blue line that shows the relationship between V out and VP minus VN so when you look at this graph let's just see what you see we have three distinct regions we have a region in which the output voltage is fixed at negative VCC so this is what is called the negative saturation region we have this region in which V out is fixed at VCC so no matter if you increase the 
uh, value for VP minus VN, the value for V out doesn't change. So that is the positive saturation region. And then we have this region in between, which we call the linear region, in which uh, the relationship between V out and VP minus VN is a linear relationship. So these three regions are represented by these three equations. So in the uh, negative saturation region, V out equals negative VCC. In the positive saturation region, V out equals positive VCC. And in the linear region, V out equals A multiplied by VP minus VN. So these are the three equations. But what is the condition that gives us these three equations? So to answer to that, we need to know what is A. So A is basically the, the gain or the amplification factor of an op-amp. So if A multiplied by Vp minus Vn is a smaller than negative Vcc, in that case, the op amp is negatively saturated, which means that its uh, output voltage cannot go below negative VCC. So if the uh, negative VCC is negative 10 volts, the output voltage cannot go below negative 10 volts. So it cannot be negative 11. It can be negative 9, but it cannot be negative 11. On the other hand, if A multiplied by VP minus VN greater than positive VCC, in that case, the output of the op amp will be in the positive saturation region, which means that it cannot go above that. So think of this uh, positive VCC at the positive power supply and the negative VCC at the negative power supply as the two caps on the value for the output voltage. So these are the limits. So it cannot go beyond positive VCC and it cannot go below negative VCC. On the other hand, if A multiplied by VP minus VN is between these two limits, that's where we have the linear behavior of the op amp. And that linear behavior has this coefficient, we call it here the gain or the amplification factor. So these three distinct regions, as I said, and I repeat here, we have the linear region, we have the positive saturation region, and we have the negative saturation region. And also, A is the gain of the op amp. So now the question becomes, how can we get the voltage constraint based on these uh, three different regions that we have? Or in another word, what other information we need to have to come up with the voltage constraint? So for most op amps, the recommended DC power or VCC is 20 volts. So that means that this V positive is 20 volts and this V negative is negative 20 volts. So it means that the limits of V out are between positive 20 and negative 20. So another thing that we need to know is that generally speaking, the gain for the op amps is a very large value. So usually in the orders of tens of thousands. So A, this A usually is greater than or equal to 10,000, which is a very large number. So now, if A is 10,000, 
what should be the value for VP minus VN for us to get to positive 20? The answer to this question is 2 millivolts. So you remember, milli was 10 to the power 3. So this is basically 2 multiplied, milli was 10 to the power negative 3, sorry. So this is 2 to the, 2 multiplied by 10 to the power negative 3 volts, right? So, so far the voltages that we have worked with were like several volts, like 10, 25, right? So this is a very a small amount of voltage that can make this up amp to go to positive or negative saturation, right? So because of this condition, because of the design of an up amp, which makes it have a very large gain. Even a small variation between VP and VN causes the output to go either to positive saturation or the negative saturation. So that is the important thing that you need to consider. Because of this, for the voltages that we usually work with, which are in the order of like several volts, the difference between VP, the non-inverting voltage, and the inverting voltage is very small. So let's say if VP is 2 volts, since we want to op operate in the linear region, that means that Vn needs to be within 2 millivolts of that. Otherwise, we are in the saturated region. Right? So because of this, we have the first uh, voltage constraint or the first constraint for the op amp, which says that the Vp equals Vn. So the voltage at the non-inverting input of the op amp equals the voltage at the inverting input. So that is very important to always consider. So this is the first cons constraint that we always use when we are working, when we design or when we analyze op amp circuits. So keep that in mind, VP equals VN. So in another word, you can say these two nodes are virtually short-circuited, right? It looks as if they are connected, right? even though they are not connected in reality, but because of the condition for the up amp, they look as if they are connected. And that is true. But how can we maintain this condition? We do that by using a negative feedback. So I will go over negative feedback uh, later on, but briefly speaking, if we make Vn to be proportional to V out, whenever V out increases, that makes Vn to increase, that makes Vp minus Vn to decrease, and that in turn makes Vo to decrease again, right? So this is the concept of negative feedback. So without having a negative feedback in uh, op-amp circuits, our op-amp goes to saturation. Although having a negative feedback doesn't guarantee that we don't go to saturation. Why? Because let's say you have designed in a, a circuit with a very large gain, right? which you will see later on. So that also causes the uh, op amp to go into saturation. So that is something that you need to also keep in mind. So that was the first constraint that we had on the voltages of the terminals of an op amp. So the voltage at the positive, or sorry, the voltage at the non-inverting input equals the voltage at the inverting input.
So now let's just see what happens with the current of the terminals. So do you remember when we were working with uh, current division circuits? So we had something like this. We had our one here and we had our two here. And we said that, okay, so let's just assume this is connected to a current source. So we said that when R2 is larger than R1, that means that uh, I1 is going to be larger than I2. So not even necessarily much larger, right? So I can modify this. So when R2 is greater than R1, that means that I1 is greater than I2. Also, from Ohm's law, we have the relationship between the voltage and the resistance too. So as you can see, the current and the resistance are inversely proportional so that means that if the amount of resistance goes up with a fixed voltage the amount of current goes down right so that is usually the case for the op amps because we have a very large input resistance so you can consider it like this so this is r in so since r in is usually very large that causes IP and IN to be very, very small. So the equivalent resistance that is usually seen by the input terminals in an op amp is very large, typically in the orders of uh, 1 mega ohms. Do you remember? A mega was 10 to the power 6. So the input resistance for these terminals is usually in the order of 1 million ohms. Because of that, we can get the second constraint for working with op amps, which is IP, the current that goes to the non-inverting terminal of the op amp, equals IN, the current that goes to the uh, negative uh, inverting terminal of the op amp and equal to zero. So one thing that you need to consider is that this conclusion is basically derived as saying IP equals zero because the input resistance is very large I n equals zero because the input resistance is very large, which means that in this case I p uh, and I n are equal and equal to zero, right? So this is how we come up with this equation. So the way that we derive uh, or get to this conclusion is different than the way we concluded the previous voltage constraint which was Vp equals Vn. So keep that in mind. Also, another thing that you should consider is that this constraint is not based on the assumption of being in linear operation region. So even if we are not in the linear operation region, this constraint is still satisfied. The, the previous one, uh, it was not always satisfied, right? Because we could have been in the uh, saturation region and in that case Vp minus Vn would be a non-zero value. But this one is usually correct because it only relates to the uh, internal resistance of the op amp. So this is the second constraint that we will always use for analyzing or designing op-amp circuits. So now 
when we say okay we have IP and IN to be equal and be equal to zero right but now the question becomes okay if the input currents are zero how does the op amp works right so so to do this brief analysis what we can do is that we can write uh, KCL for the sum of the currents entering the op amp so let's just assume we have this circle around this uh, op amp and let's just consider it as a node if we do that based on the KCL we know that the sum of all the currents that enter or exit this node equals to zero so for this we have five currents we have IP the current of the non-inverting input I N the current of inverting input we have IC plus the current of the positive power supply we have IC minus the current of the negative power supply and finally we have IO which is the output current so since all of them are entering this node they all have the same sign right so even though we used before uh, when we said we have currents entering a node we use them with negative sign since all of them are the same we can use all the positive sign too so the actual equation is something like this negative i o minus y i c plus minus i c minus equals zero so i can do it like this so these positive and negative sign don't compute here so that is basically the following equation basically the above equation is multiplied by a negative sign so given that ip equals in equals zero what we have is io the output current to be equal to negative ic plus plus ic minus so as you can see the current that this op amp is working with or the current that it can deliver to let's say a load resistor at its output is not determined by the input currents from the non-inverting and inverting input instead that is the current that is being provided by the positive and negative power supply right so the output current of an op amp is provided by the power supplies and not necessarily the input signal so this means that even though the currents at input terminals are very small we can have uh, a noticeable amount of current at the output terminal so this was a brief uh, analysis of the current for the output terminal of an op amp right because based on the first um, based on the second constraint it is very hard to comprehend okay if the input currents are practically zero how does the op amp even can work or provide useful uh, functionality for us so you can think of this ip and in or the sig input signals to basically controlling this op amp not necessarily uh, providing all the necessary uh, power or uh, voltage that will be delivered to the load so in this video we went over the op amp terminal properties and we came up with two very important constraints for the op amps one was vp equals vn so the voltage at the non-inverting input of the op amp equals the voltage at the inverting input and the second constraint that we came up with was IP 
equals i n equals zero. So it means that the current that goes through the non-inverting terminal equals the current that goes through the inverting terminal equals zero. So these two constraints are very useful and we will be using them for design and analysis of any uh, operational amplifier circuit that we will see later on.